So you're either getting access to your first Kubernetes cluster, or maybe you've got access to a V cluster in addition to your other cluster. And then you're wondering, how do I how do I configure my kubectl command line to interact with both of these clusters? Like, how do I switch between them? Well, that's where contexts come in. So today we're going to talk about contexts. We're going to take a look at the kubectl config, and then we're going to take a look at how to switch between contexts, and then some new tools that make it a lot easier to interact with the context, and then maybe even uh, the namespacing. So let's get started. So what is a kubectl config? A kubectl configuration is a file that stores information used to interact with a Kubernetes cluster. So this is where you're going to find your cluster name, the location of the Kubernetes API server, the credentials for authenticating, and then contexts. You might have seen this file before. Usually you drop it in .kube slash config, and that's how you're going to interact with it. That's where kubectl is going to look for it, unless you define the file uh, within the kubectl command, like our one-liner. That's where kubectl by default is going to look for the configuration. So you've got some information in there. If you've got multiple configurations set up in different contexts, you're probably wondering, how do I switch between these? Well, let's take a look at the command line real quick. So in this demo, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at a kubectl configuration. I'm going to go kubectl config view, pipe it to less, and then show you what a configuration looks like. Some of the values are going to be hidden here, but this is what a kube config looks like. And then I'm going to take a look at the context. So I can do that by typing out kubectl config current context. I'm using default currently. And then if I want to see my other context, I can type kubectl config get context. And then I've got multiple contexts here. So I've got default and then I've got a kind local dev. So at one point I was running a kind cluster. And the default is actually a K3S cluster that I'm normally using for most of my demos. After that, what we can do is we can switch contexts if we want. So this is how you actually switch between the different cluster, the different clusters that you want to use. So we can switch which context we want to use by doing something like kubectl config use context kind dash local dev. And then I've swapped over to my kind cluster from my K3S cluster. Uh, if we want to switch back, we can kubectl config use context default, and then we switch back over. We can also see which current context we're using so that we're not lost by doing kubectl config current context again. So a super useful tool is something called crew. And what crew lets you do is extend the kubectl CLI to add some other things to it so that you're not using multiple CLIs to do everything. So in this example, what we're going to do is we're going to actually install crew. I'll bring up crew in a browser in a moment and show you some information about where you can go to figure out how to get that installed. Uh, what we've done is we've actually installed CTX already which is context. And if you look here, I'm typing out kubectl ctx, and that's showing me my context. If you want to, you can also just install kubectx by itself, and then you're not using kubectl ctx, you're using kubectx, which is a standalone CLI. Either works. Some people install it by itself, some people install it with the, with the kubectl so they're not managing multiple uh, CLIs. But you can extend kubectl with a lot of different things. One of the other very useful things is uh, the kubevert uh, plugins that you're using kubectl vert instead of uh, all this uh, vert CTL stuff. Here I'm using kubectx to list my context, and then I can also just type kubectx and then the name of the context to switch between them, which can be a little bit easier than going through and doing the get context and all of that if you just want to do it quickly. But that should make that a little bit easier. So let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of these tools uh, in a browser real quick. So here's the crew site. If you haven't heard of crew before, head over to crew.sigs.k8s.io. It's a great tool. It lets you extend the kubectl CLI, uh, which makes it easier to interact with Kubernetes uh, using a single command line instead of having multiple different things you're installed. And here's more information about extending kubectl with plugins. I'm just going to browse through this real quick. Uh, this is basically what crew uses to install stuff. And then here's the kubectx GitHub repository with a ton of stars, uh, some information about like how stuff actually works and uh, a little like demo showing what we just showed in the uh, CLI. So check out kubectx. Also, kubeNS is, is super useful if you're getting tired of switching between namespaces or defining the namespace every time you want to run a command. You just use kubeNS and it'll select the namespace you're working in. Uh, both of these tools are great if you're using vCluster because you might have multiple virtual clusters where you want to switch context between all the time. And then you may also have namespaces in there that you want to switch between. So as always, thank you for checking out this video. I hope it was useful. We just wanted to dive quickly into the kube context and how you can use it and interact with different contexts. But uh, we should have more videos about vCluster, how to get different configurations set up. And a lot of the stuff that we're also going to be showing off is getting you up to speed to where you can start using vCluster. So if it's helping you learn a couple of things about like multi-tenancy, how to use Kubernetes, how to use the context that'll prepare you to use vCluster, then that's what we're interested in. So if you have uh, any comments or would like to see videos on something else or things that you're running into issues with when you're just starting out with vCluster, please let us know. You can either reach out to us on Slack, or like I said, comment below. All right, bye.